one. Hello everyone, welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. We have two special guests today. Jalen, my Hello. friend, <laughs> over there in the Jurassic Park shirt. And of course, JP Land 21, first time on the channel. Nice to meet you and thank you for coming on. You guys probably already know about him, but if you don't, don't check out his channel. How are you today? How are you today? I'm doing really good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, Jalen? I'm feeling really good. Today's been going great, and I'm, I have opportunity to be on two of my favorite YouTubers on YouTube right now as far as theme park goes, so that's always a plus. <laughs> Well, thank you. So I have a lot to talk about today. Like, for example, the lockdown, you especially, JP Land, obviously with the theme park closed, it's hard to come up with videos. So what have you been doing during this lockdown for new video ideas? I know you've been doing some gaming stuff, which is really cool. But what else? Well, honestly, I'm trying not to get out of the house too much because, uh, for my safety and the safety of my family, I'm trying to limit the amount of times I can visit City Walk, for an example. Uh, that's why I haven't been able to pr produce that many videos lately. Um, so I've been keeping everything very limited. Um, I've also started like this Minecraft theme park server, I guess, and that way people can experience Disneyland uh, in Minecraft. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I saw a couple of videos from that one. That was super cool. That's and that's cool. on, uh, oh yeah, on Minecraft, obviously. But, um, and so before the lockdown happened in, obviously, March, it was the exact weekend that the, at least for me, I was going to go to the Secret Life for Pets preview, so I was very disappointed. What were your, like, theme park plans that, that before the lockdown happened, that weekend, the lockdown? Did you have a, um, did you secure a pass preview to Secret Life for Pets that weekend? Yeah, I actually had the first the first loading group for Secret Life of Pets on that Saturday. Um, actually, the week that week I was supposed to make a visit to Universal Studios Florida. Um, oh wow! I think a week after, that's where I was gonna attend the Peacock Live event and the yes, opening of I Secret Life of Pets. Well. Yeah. And Jalen, you, I know you're you kind of go between Nevada and California. But did yeah. you have any theme park plans? I think we had actually a plan to meet up at Six Flags or something around that yeah. lockdown time. Yeah, it was um, it was going to be the first time that I got to experience West Coast Racers. And um, when they started, we was in that right in that moment where they're um, upgrading everyone's passes. And so I was like, yeah, let's mm -hmm. go. I have a, uh, a, I think I have, it was a platinum pass. I, st I still do, but um, I was like, let's go. I want to do West Coast Racers. And then that's when we got the, the um the notification that they're gonna start closing things down. I was like, well, it's that all that to go down the waste. <laughs> and uh, like, good thing is both of those things will still be there when the park is open. So that's good. right. Um, but something that may not be there is Halloween Horror Night. So as you probably guys seen the, the tents have been like constructed, but then I've seen pictures of them taking it down or taking at least the wood facades down. So. What do you think, JP Land? Do you think uh, Horror Nights is on this year, or do you think they decided to pause it? As of right now, I'm in between of yes and no for Halloween Horror Nights. If you're looking at these Metropolitan sets, you can see that they're slowly being taken <laughs> down, but that doesn't mean Halloween Horror Nights cannot happen. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights is actually the number one moneymaker event for Universal Studios Hollywood, so I think it would be a little intense if they were to get rid of Halloween Horror Nights entirely. So, uh, would you like me to continue on what I think they should be doing, or what I think they're going to be doing? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, what I'm thinking right now is they're going to limit the mazes down to three mazes uh, instead of six. So, we'll have the Walking Dead, the Waterworld set, and the one by the Mummy Q. And those three mazes will just mm -hmm. be Halloween Horror Nights. Um, as for scare zones, everything will have to be limited down. So uh, they'll probably have stage stage shows, I guess. Uh, have mm -hmm. you seen the Trick or Treat from Universal Studios Florida? The, the scare zone, at least. Mm -hmm. 
I have um maybe I think maybe a video of it. So basically, the scare zones are set up in a way where all the scare actors are on a stage, and you're basically watching them like torture people or whatever. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So oh, wow. that's how I think Halloween Horror Night cool. scare zones are gonna be set up this year. They wouldn't have like free roaming scare actors or anything, just to social distance mm -hmm. with everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that's I a good idea. Really huh? like, I really liked um, looking into that because when I seen them put the mazes up. And then it was it was right in the moment where they're like, oh, everything's gonna be closed. But the, and I was telling people that I was planning on going with. I was like, well, I don't think they would go out their way to construct these mazes, hire workers, and do all that just for them to take it down. Even if they had a, a idea that they're gonna have to close, they wouldn't go out their way to put up mazes mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I agree. And see, I had this idea that. <laughs> Even if they were to do like all the mazes, you know, all ten or whatever they they do, um, <laughs> you just, you know, they have they have these massive queues already for the the uh, Halloween Horror Nights, and if you just let in like one group at a time and then separate them by like thirty seconds, I feel like that's a good social distance, you know, way to do the maze without you know holding up the line too much. So I feel like that's what they would be they would be able to do, and I. It looks like Knott's is continuing to do their scary farm thing in a modified version because they're still putting stuff up from pictures from the Taste of Calico event. So I feel like, like you're right. I feel like we'll have some sort of Halloween Horror Nights this year. Yeah, definitely. And they could always implement that virtual queue because we saw that getting more and more introduced, especially with the new edition of Secret Life of Pets off the leash, which is heavily oh, dependent yeah. on that. Virtual queue. Virtual queue, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, oh, and wow. <laughs> Let me talk about that queue real quick, because I think that's the coolest thing. You'll be able to go in and wander around their apartments instead of just standing in line and then get on the ride like when you want. I feel like that's the coolest. I feel like all rides should be like that. It's so immersive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. And uh, let's see here. Okay. And speaking of Sea Leopard Pets, on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you guys for the Sea Leopard Pets off the lease attraction? Daily. Um, I, I think I'm a solid 9.5. The 9.5 because it's a new experience to Universal. It's a different type of dark ride being brought to the park and is needed in that area. Like some more, it needed some more, like, some I needed another attraction like that to bring light to that upper lot. Uh -huh. Um, I reason why I say nine and a half is because it's it's a dark ride, so it's like it's it's not like it's something we've never seen before, but it's a new experience mm -hmm. as far as character and theming and virtual cues. So that's why it's, I give it a solid nine and a half. Hey, P Lan, I'm gonna have to give it a ten. Um. So in our media posts, we noticed that The Secret Life of Pets Off the Leash is going to have over 64 animatronics. Now, I don't think any universal attraction at the moment here in Hollywood has over 60 animatronics. So that's going to be very exciting to see all those animatronics uh, used, more practical effects. I think Universal has learned their mistakes with using screens, so uh, maybe they'll implement it in a different way. I'm really excited to see how this ride is just pulled off and taking you into the secret life of pets world yeah sam i think i'd have to say i'm about a 10 because also the cool they have that facial recognition technology to make you like a pet that seems really cool and the new scenes from the commercial look um it seems it looks like one of them you're in some kind of lab or science lab looks really interesting but um that was the queue plus the facade outside that was drop dead gorgeous i'm super excited now for the Jurassic World, how are you? How excited are you guys for the oh, yes. hopefully full, complete version of Jurassic World, JP Land? Honestly, I don't know how I feel about Jurassic World at the moment. It's been down <laughs> since at least February now. Um, I'm really excited to see what Universal does with this attraction because when it first opened it almost felt like an empty canvas just waiting to be filled with paint and i <laughs> feel like they should add more dinosaurs more more of the indominus rex we need to see more of that 
Uh, mm -hmm. and especially more yeah, in definitely. Predator Cove. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, I definitely Predator Cove, and just, the whole entire ride is just, as far as animatronics and dinosaurs goes, has just took us, like, a drop, like, it, I feel like, as old as the animatronics were in, in Jurassic Park, they still were enough to make the ride more immersive, because there was more things going on, and, um, mm -hmm. like, they, the, the, they had so many opportunities with Predator Cove, like, it's, the half animatronic of the Indominus Rex that you put inside the drop, the final scene, you could put that half body right there inside the, the actual Indominus cage and, you know, have some type of action going on. Um, but it, the way it's looking is, at first it was like, oh, yes, I can't wait. It's a, a full-size Indominus Rex. But until we see that, it's like, well, you know, it, it's, it, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I just hope we get that the, the Indominus Rex and T Rex fighting at the end. That's all I really want to see. That's been yeah. promised. I really want to see. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm glad they did add the gyrosphere in the Predator Cove, at least from the the drone image or the the aerial images. It looks like they did. Um, I think. Right, right, JP Land. They added the the gyrosphere there. Oh yeah, it does look like. They added in a, a gyrosphere. Uh, it also looks like they added some other sort of dinosaur on the right side of it. Uh, if not one, mm. maybe two. Ah, see, so that's already like 50% improvement than what was there before. So that's good. <laughs> and yeah. um, so, Food Fest, bars are closed, but Food Fest will seem to be a loophole. Um, first of all, are you guys going to Knott's Taste of Calco event? I'll be there on Saturday, but I, I know you said you're limiting your exposure, JP, but are you uh, going there even with the extend extended weekends? Yeah, uh, we actually bought our tickets for the 8th of August for Taste of Calico. Nice. And Jalen, you, you said you weren't going, right? Yeah, I d I'm stuck out here right now, but... Um... I plan on moving back to California within, like, probably next month I'll be back in California, so I'll definitely have my old life back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and do you think other parks, like <laughs> California Adventure, with their Food and Wine Festival, or, or Universal, should put together some kind of food fest or a festival, or just open up, again, the shops and the stores but no rides? Do you think they should do that in the meantime while the parks are closed? Oh, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. I see. I like a hundred percent agree. They should do more food festivals just so we can like be just be have that feeling of being inside the park again. Either Disneyland or Knotts or Universal. Just having that feeling of being in the park is always better than just being stuck looking at the gates from the outside. Like that's always a plus. Just, just to be inside the environment of being inside one of the theme parks is always a plus. Um, it would add. Me, personally, I always, like, okay, after I eat, I want to do a ride, so it'll be hard for me to just eat and then just look at all the attractions and be like, <laughs> wow, I really want to get on there. <laughs> but, yes, it's it, it's better than nothing. Yes, oh, wait, sorry, Jay Plan, are we going to say something? Yeah, actually, I think everyone should take a note from Knott's. Knott's is doing an amazing job on, like, uplifting their park and keeping it alive at least uh universal has been a little dry mm -hmm. same with disney um disney announced their opening for the 17th i think last month and uh unfortunately that was canceled um but hopefully other theme parks start doing more of the food and wine type of uh events like knots those are really cool yeah and that's the thing yeah they, they do with Knott's, it's like just even just watching videos, like you could just tell it's a, a, a brighter moment to be inside of a park for for because for so long you can't even step up to the gates and nothing like that. It's always from a distance. And now Knott's is giving you an opportunity to be inside their park safely is just beautiful. And I must say, you know, from the videos I've seen, looks up, you know, they're very enforcing the rules. It's very safe. Everyone has a mask on. They're doing the social distancing. So at least they're, you know, they're taking it super seriously. So that's 
um, reassuring to everyone, everyone who's like not sure of going. That the, the opening weekend looked pretty, pretty good. Now that they extended their hours, hopefully the people will be spread out a little bit more. There won't be. I heard there's. I heard the only bad thing is like 45 minute lines or something. But I guess mm. that can be kind of annoying. But um, let's see. And so of course before this all happened, like literally before the parks closed down. The Walking Dead attraction closed. Now, I know there's rumors of what to replace it, but what would you guys personally like to see with Walking Dead JP Land? Right now, I'm having some doubts on another attraction replacing uh, The Walking Dead in that location, at least. But what I'd love mm -hmm. to see is another Universal Classic Monsters maze. I know John Murdy, the creative director for Halloween Horror Nights has a passion and a love for the Universal Classic Monsters, so I feel like if they would include him into their next attraction, you know, it, it would be amazing. So I'd love to see that as the replacement. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like, you, that soundstage has, I mean, not specifically the soundstage, but that that attraction space has been all, has, has started with universal monsters so now why can you keep i say keep the same tradition and keep it as the one place in the park where you could always find get a little jump scare and find some little horror in the park there's always going to be that one spot at universal now now jaylen because i know jp land said not in that especially not in that location <laughs> but would you support that moving like a universal monster made like on the lower lot or somewhere else because it seems like that upper area now, pretty family friendly with Kung Fu Panda to the left of it and Secret of Pets to the right of it. That is true, but I think I'd rather keep the lower lot for all of the thrill stuff and all of the name, like the good, the all, like keep it the way you have it. Universal has it planned out well, I think, where they have the upper lot for, um, you know, like you said, attention span more of a kid in like Despicable Me and Secret Life of Pets and things like that. And then the lower lots, like all the big boy stuff, the mummy, Jurassic World, and ba uh, Transformers. I was going to say Back to the Future, I wish. Um, Transformers. <clears throat> um, but it's that it's that type of leveling. And then you have uh, possibly Super Nintendo World. So it's like, I think I, if I was Universal, I was like, let's save as much land we have down here for a possible expansion for the things that we have already down here then make room for something that could be left up in the um, upper lot where there's already space made for it. Oh, why am I computer does that? All right, sorry. My computer sometimes just freezes, so no you stopped talking a while ago. That's why I did it. Anyway, okay, so speaking of Super Nintendo World, that's still going, so that's nice. And the one in Japan looks so, so cool with all its interactive elements. So, I'm like a 100 out of 10 excited for this thing next year. How excited are you guys, and do you think we'll get that Donkey Kong expansion in a couple years? JP Land. Oh, I'm really excited for the Super Nintendo World project. Um, over here in Hollywood, we're actually lacking a lot of attractions down at the lower lot. So, it'd be really cool to have mm -hmm. more, uh, more additions to the lower lot, bringing it, bringing it back to life. I know when Jurassic Park first opened, that's basically the life creator at the lower lot, but now we need something new. And uh, Secret Life of Pet, uh, I mean, Super Nintendo World will definitely provide that <laughs> life. Um, as for Donkey Kong, I do think they have that possibility because there are still four more sound stages right behind Super Nintendo World. So if they were to utilize, uh, tear down those sound stages and utilize the location, it would be very possible to have that Donkey Kong attraction. Daily. I just think I just think that um, a Donkey Kong attraction would be a huge upgrade to the lower lot and like you said bring life to the lower lot again because having that lineup with the Mummy Jurassic World, possibly Donkey Kong and I believe it's gonna be Mario Kart and then you have Transformers, that's five high maintenance attractions that are like you would def those are like must do's those aren't attractions that you'd be like oh we could do that next time like those are things you want to do 
And so mm. that that'll definitely bring life to the Lord a lot. Um, and I'm definitely excited for that. And I just thought about something when he was saying about how the the sound stages behind Super Nintendo World would, would be taken down for the expansion. It just made me think like, as time has gone on, you could just see the progress as Universal has, has Universal went from just straight um, production and movies to slowly becoming a, a full running theme park. And that's just always cool to see because you look at Universal Orlando, I've been to Universal Orlando and it's just a full theme park. And then you come out here and it's, you know, it's half theme park and half movies, movie, um, movie uh, studio. So it's, it's cool yeah. to have a movie studio because it's a, it's a cool thing to like experience with the movie studio, but it's, it's definitely cool to see that Universal is Hollywood is becoming a full running theme park. Yeah, they're really finding all that space out there. Which leads me to the next actual thing. What area of the park do you guys think should be improved next? And what attraction, if any, do you think will be on next? Like maybe Mummy? Or what What do you guys think will be gone or improved next? JP Lane. Alright, so there's a lot of things I could say about attractions being removed or areas of the park being rethemed because it constantly mm-hmm. happens here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Uh, we're looking mm-hmm. back, I think, six years ago, and the first area or the main main street of Universal, that was completely different six years ago. Um, so mm-hmm. I feel like anything in the upper lot can always be redone. Uh, maybe they're going to retheme all of the French Street, the French Br- Bristol Street. Uh, I know before before the parks closed, they added a new illumination sign on top of the Despicable Me Minion Mayhem building. Uh, so that leads me to thinking that there'll be an Illuminations Land expansion uh, near that area, and maybe they can add a dark ride or a flat ride in that area. <laughs> Another thing I'd want to see is an expansion to the theme park. So there's a lot of things they can do with that, but one of them would in, would one of them would involve removing the studio tour out of Universal Studios Hollywood. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are going to feel iffy about it, but if you think about it, I think they can fit in a good extra 9 rides or so into the whole studio tour area and more lands, interactive yeah. stuff. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And it would make the park stand out compared to like a theme park like Disneyland or anywhere else. Um, it'll mm. become much larger. I know people want Universal to buy out the golf course right behind Universal as well. Um, that's actually pretty. Oh, I, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, I would love yeah. I, I would love for that to happen, but I think it would be a very very large investment because it's owned by the Bob Hope family, so it's pretty expensive. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, they um, definitely. Yeah, they, I think the world, the, the the world, the world segment can fit a whole like land itself, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. See, and that just I uh, him bringing up like removing the studio tour to a, better improve the park and expand the park is. I, I agree with him. I think that would be a great idea. If, like how I was saying earlier, if Universal wants to move towards being more more of a theme park, then you make that sacrifice to compete with Disney. Because right now, all you have against Disneyland is that you have a studio tour. But that's not going to... They're expanding day by day. So if that's going to... you have Universal having a studio tour is going to burn out eventually. So it, 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 by time, it's, it, it is, it is going to become time to think about, like, well, we may probably should think about removing the studio tour, expand the park, and bring new experiences to the park. Um, there's, there's so many opportunities. I think what, what, like, slows down that process is that there's things like uh, Supercharged, Fast and Furious Supercharged, that, that recently opened, and... Um, other projects like that that haven't been open for that long that are like, well, we spent all this money to bring this attraction here. They'll give it time for like to for the numbers to go down or something like that before they even consider like 
Like, maybe we should do this. But I think that's a, a brilliant idea. I didn't even think about that, like moving the studio towards expand the park. Oh, you guys kind of, yeah, you kind of answered that, that one. Another question I had, which later on, since I say, would you support shortening the seal to which allows the theme park the same expansion? So that's basically a yes. Uh, yes, I, I would too. Um, because there's so much land back there, as you guys know, and with newer technologies and uh, the the really good consolidating space, Universal place in the back, but like with the new buildings they're putting up, so they consolidate a lot of space. They can, in fact, they don't have to like remove totally at one like at one time the steel. They can just do like they can shorten the steel to her, you know, every couple years and like for a gradual removal, so it won't be like. Dang, why are you just moving the studio to you like that? You know, so they can just kind of, they kind of shorten a little bit, almost like with uh, what the Disney parks and their studio tour type thing they did. They kind of just shortened it and then took it away. But um, let's see. So have, in that space. A... Oh, sorry, Jalen. What were you saying? I, I have a question. Can I can I ask a question? Of course. For, for the both of you, um, what what would be your speculation? Because the mummy is starting to become one of the outdated attractions, so what what would be a speculation of what they possibly could replace it with, or just retheme it to? Hmm. Mummy. Well, I honestly, and this was gonna come, and this is my next question would be, what should come to the park? Which I'm gonna just ask, but I'd say I'd love to. Get rid of the if they are gonna get rid of the mummy. <laughs> I like to just tear the building down and like put like Diagon Alley and that and plus like, yes. expand it back into the studio to your area. Diagon Alley and, and uh maybe a Hagrid's or something, that'd be great. Yeah. I agree one hundred percent. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Like I was I was every time I go down there, I'm like, man, I can Diagon Alley would fit like Perfectly in here, like mm. it would be so cool. You'd have an up the Harry Potter on upper lot, Harry Potter on the lower lot. It would draw people down there. Then you'd have a really great lineup. You have Super Nintendo World, Jurassic World, uh, Transformers, and Diagon Alley. Like that's so cool. Yeah. And then if they get rid of the studio tour, then Hagrid's. There's definitely enough space for Hagrid's if they got rid of the studio tour. So. Anybody well, knows any Universal execs, please let them know. <laughs> well, my suggestion, um, Diagon Alley is definitely number one. But even though it's already too late in the process because Jurassic World is already done, but if we even had the chance to build Jurassic World on a separate piece, like of land, and create the the, the Jurassic Park land, like how they have in Florida, have the Jurassic World River mm-hmm. Adventure, and then the Velocicoaster. That thing looks amazing. Like, if we had that in Hollywood, I would go to Universal every day, the day of my life, to get on that roller coaster. Like, that thing looks amazing, and that I think that would be a huge opportunity. It's like I said, it it's too late in the process. Jurassic World is already done, so they wouldn't take out Jurassic World, or they wouldn't take out everything in that area just to make room for Jurassic World uh, land. But I just thought about that, like, as a cool thing to think about. If we got the Velocicoaster, that would be amazing. Yeah, I must say the Velocicoaster looks uh, looks pretty good with its rock work. I can't wait till the rock work's all done. It looks um looks fantastic. What do you think about the Velocicoaster, JP? It looks amazing. I would love to have it in Hollywood, but I don't I don't really see them putting it anywhere. It wouldn't really yeah. it wouldn't have much space, but I'd love to see that roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic. Let's see. So, oh wow. So, lastly, here, guys, best guesses, best educated guesses. When, what month, you guys see the any theme park in Southern California? Could be Sea World. Could be Magic Mountain. Could be you know, When do you think the first one is gonna open up? What month. AP land. So believe it or not, I think Universal might be the first theme park to reopen, and I'm thinking this is gonna have, this is probably gonna happen somewhere in August. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Because, I mean, they're, they're so, they were ready to open July 1st, obviously, before the, like, he didn't want to do the, he didn't release the theme park guidelines. But, I mean, as you've seen in your videos and in my videos, they're all ready to go. They're all lined. They have the tape ready to go. There's I, Every time I go to Sidney, I kind of look in. There's team members walking around doing stuff. So I feel like they're definitely ready to go. So I, I can definitely see an August open. If allowed to I, for the universe. I agree. Universal um, may be the first one to open. Um, I just think that Knott's will too because they already have a process where you're inside mm -hmm. the park. So they, they're definitely mm -hmm. like not necessarily ready, but okay. they're, they're there. As they're there as much as Universal, it's just Universal hasn't gotten us in the park yet. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Knott's is like kind of like halfway, like like kind of figuring out of people in the park. So I can see, yeah, Knott's opening long in the same week as the Universal would or when just I mean, some of the, the theme park guidelines released and then some of them make an announcement first. Um, since I, I feel bad we haven't talked about Six Flags much. Oh, wait, what? I, I was just on the topic of parks opening. One of my mm -hmm. ideas is that I think Disneyland and California Adventure won't open until Avengers Campus is like 90% done. And I think, I think the way they're going to do because if you like look at shots and stuff from Disneyland, like there's no taping down, there's mm -hmm. no nothing. It's literally ghost town. And so mm -hmm. I think their plan is to have avengers campus within 90 percent, so that by the time they open up the park it's not long after until it actually opens like how they had it it was supposed to open this month actually sometime this month um they're a couple months behind so i think they're i think it's a marketing plan for them how they're going to open the park and make double the money um that they would if they would just open the park Hmm. That's an interesting thought. Interesting, interesting thing. See, I was thinking that I was thinking that um, since it's already uh, almost August, and Disneyland's little Halloween time is just starts September six. I was like, man, you know, maybe they'll just wait till that first week of September to open and just open it with Halloween time and just all the Halloween overlays. Since they're gonna have to do that. Anyway, in like a month. Yeah. Figure maybe at this point they'll just wait until that point. Um, what do you think, JP? You think Disneyland will wait till Halloween, or yo, they'll wait till whenever uh, they're first allowed? Honestly, I don't think Halloween time will be happening at Disneyland this year. I think they already confirmed that Walt Disney World won't be hosting any of their Halloween events either. So I yeah. don't, I don't see Disneyland doing it. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe not like the Halloween parties, but like just that, the, like that decorations, you know, like the, mm. like the Halloween overlays everywhere. But, um, hmm. yeah, hopefully soon, but hopefully August definitely for Universal, because you know, what's what's of them being smaller has a kind of an, an advantage, because you know they're not much to set up because they're smaller than Aussie, something like Disneyland. Oh, mm. I hope it's funny. Mm -hmm. But. Thank you guys for joining me on this awesome podcast. It's my first time using Discord. Thank you, JP, for teaching me how this works. <laughs> but um, thank you guys for joining. Subscribe to JP Land's channel. I'll leave a link in the comment below. Jalen has no channel, but you can follow him on <laughs> Instagram if you want. Or you can shout out your social media if you want people to follow you. Or uh, not. <laughs> it's okay. But anyway, um... Have a great day, guys, and happy July. Stay cool and stay safe. Have a fantastic day. Peace. Bye. All right.